Hello and welcome to the Let's Get Real podcast, where we're going to talk about our real life events and bring on guests to talk about theirs. Today, we're going to be talking to Paul about his real life events and tragedies. That's what I'm calling it, a tragedy. <laughs> okay. So, uh, would you like to give them a brief overlay of the events in question? Or, yeah, yeah, we're just going and to... then I'll go into questions from there for you. Yeah, so obviously today we're going to be talking about a series of events that have occurred probably in the last six years, um, obviously spanning between them, not exactly in order in the same year. Um, so a couple of them probably, you know, quite serious, quite in depth, um, and you know, are going to be quite hard to talk about because, you know, being accused of certain things were very difficult for me. Um, but so yeah, the first couple of obviously subjects, you know, you can talk about. Everyone knows, and everyone's had it before, or not necessarily, but you know, you can look at the aspects of you know being cheated on. You know, that's a big oh, one. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have experienced that, and then obviously you know the second subject is being accused and arrested for something that you did not commit. That's another big, big subject. Um, and then the third one's having COVID four times. That was a hard one. Do you want to start on the COVID point? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do, yeah. So, so obviously, you know, COVID's just, you know... It, it's kind of ended in the public eye now, but it's still affecting... Especially back here, you know, when I first got it in 2020. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a big hit, especially the first time having it, because obviously, you know, having the... It was called the Kent variant back then. I don't know what the scientific... Name, oh, it was K two seven two something stupid. Yeah, making that rubbish up. And this was back when you was in the police force, right? As yeah, well. so you was being yeah. exposed to everybody who wasn't following the rules. Yes. So you know, people that are on out during lockdown, you know, would have to go and address the situation, make arrests, make inquiries, um, and obviously that's how I caught COVID the first time, and I was very ill from it. You know, I'm a healthy lad, don't smoke, don't drink, um, and you know, I was. It, you know, I was in bed for two weeks, struggling to breathe. And um, wasn't this over the Christmas period, so you missed Christmas with yeah, your family as well? Yeah, so all my, all my family, other than my mum and sister, went up to London, because obviously you had them two days where you can go and still see family. Yeah, you were allowed to travel a certain um, yeah. amount, unless you're uh, part of the government. government. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, two days, you could go and see your family. Um, so everyone went up there other than my mum and sister, and it kind of ruined Christmas for everyone, because obviously, we couldn't meet up, we couldn't eat, we couldn't do the stuff that you usually do with families. Um, but then you can look at the fact of I still saw my mum and sister yeah. and I still had dinner with them, but I was actually in a hazmat suit. <coughs> like a full on hazmat suit. I, I, where, I was, where, where'd you get one of those from? Like, was it the, oh, the, the army? Yeah, the army. Oh, the army, the respirator okay. on as well, yeah. Okay. So literally, I was wearing a, a respirator, which is everyone knows it as civilians, a gas mask, but with a yeah. full. It's like exterminate a kind of hazmat suit, so I didn't spread anything. I still let my little li lift my mask up, just at the roast dinner on Christmas dinner like that. Yeah. But yeah, obviously the first time I had it, very bad. And then the second time I had it was six months after that, uh, which nothing curiously changed. And then the third time I had it at Christmas again. Yeah. In 2021. See, that's the one I thought you was on about. Yeah, no, 2021 I had it again, the third time, um, and it caused some serious. I won't say mental problems, but you know, it affected sleep and stuff a lot. And I think that's what they call long term COVID. Yeah, the long term yeah. COVID impact. Yeah, and I won't sleep in. And this is when stuff, you know, started to seriously go wrong in 2021. And is that wrong with in regards to the other subjects that yeah. we talk about as well so, today? Yeah, exactly. Um, and obviously, you know, coming into December 2021, I'll definitely say, also, I was in a relationship with XYZ. <laughs> yeah, she was a police officer as well. Um, that's how we met, and you know everything was going well, as a normal relationship does. And how long had it been going on for at this point? The relationship, to give some context. Eight months, seven months. Eight, seven, eight months. Yeah. Okay, so quite a quite a while. Yeah, then. it wasn't like uh, there was no problems in between. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, yeah, nothing changed. It was all the same up until about December twenty twenty one. Um, where things start changing, obviously I know, you know, you always, there was never anything proven that obviously she cheated, but I know that she cheated, and there was, 
I would count as a kiss cheating, wouldn't you? Because yeah. that, I've seen that in my lives. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, even the gammon lady's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want yeah. to say that again? Uh, what? No, yeah, that's, that, that's definitely yes, it. Yeah, so I say kissing and cheating, so obviously nothing. Absolutely. Sexually, I don't know anything happened, but kissing, and she openly admitted to this that two weeks later. Um, so and this we, was over Christmas. Yeah, yeah so actually at the Christmas period when you were sick. Sick. So when I, was, I was sick, and then it what was. What an ass. Yeah, I was sick. <laughs> and then about. Two weeks after you come out of obviously being isolated, we went on a Christmas party because we passed all our police exams. The whole group went there. We partied. I didn't drink. I had a, I think I had a couple of ciders, but you know. Yeah, you don't really drink. drink. You have like like IPA ciders, yeah. things like that. Now I got drunk and out, whatever. And we was out in the garden. We had a conversation. She was obviously intoxicated. Um, I see. So I um, kind of you know we had a discussion about our current relationship status. Um, and I was like, yeah, everything's going well, you know, because you kind of like, want that conf confirmation that everything's going well with the relationship, what can do better, what you can yeah, do Yeah, yeah, just, just that nice reassurance yeah. that you're on the right track. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've done that, but she took it obviously and misinterpreted that to, oh, I finished with her there and then. Oh, that was right. the excuse she okay. used. So you broke up with her by asking if everything was okay. Yeah, um, apparently. Um, so I went back indoors, she went off with two other blokes start talking to them, obviously the people that were in our class at the time when we passed out and um, passed all our police examinations. I went in the kitchen with my mate, we had a discussion. I then heard them giggling, tussling, rumbling. I'm like, I'm not done what there is, the door was closed, it was in the fun room. Yeah. But you know, I could hear giggling, so obviously they'll play fine and mess that, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Didn't think nothing of it, I'm a kind of like a no, well, relaxed. Yeah, it takes a lot of, for, for me to lose my shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, anything, night went on, everyone went to bed, I stayed up all night because obviously I was in the kitchen, I couldn't go upstairs because people were in the bedrooms, I couldn't go in the front room because she and him was in there. Yeah, so you stayed in the kitchen. So, I stayed in the kitchen thinking that uh, everything was fine still. And they were just in the room right next yeah. door to that. At just the time. the stuff, watching movies or whatever you do. What, um, you, what you assume they were doing. Yeah, exactly. There's no obviously proof that I know what exactly what happened in that room. So come up to morning, everyone went home, everyone done their own bits. She messaged me a day later, I need to talk to you. I was like, okay, I found that a bit strange. Went into work the next day, um, when, before we went on duty. She couldn't tell me. Before she, you went on duty, she couldn't tell no, me? No, yeah, she apologised and she went, I'll message you later. She couldn't do it in person, apparently, because she was too scared of my reaction. So I instantly knew there was something up. Something must have occurred, and yeah. I still actually have the text messages saved on my phone because I like to keep this sort of yeah, you keep it all for, for, for the reasons why I explain after what happened to me. Um, yeah, so she messaged me the next day asking me to ring her, so I rang her, and she kind of went, "I kissed somebody else." Just, well, just that was it. But yeah, and the thing is, and, you, and uh, what I forgot to mention is that. I actually heard from somebody else in the class previously from the boy that she kissed had told somebody else who told me that she kissed somebody. Okay. And he said, kind of, it went on for about 30 seconds, kiss on the lips 30 seconds. Okay, so... When she told me, I only lasted two seconds and I pushed him away. That was her. So he, he explained it like a, a, a make-out session, almost, yeah. in a sense. Whereas she was like, look, I kissed him, pulled, he kissed me, I pulled, pulled away. away. That, that was, was it. it, like a... So there was two different done. stories, and I didn't know what one to believe. Yeah. You, you want to believe her over them. Yeah. You but might, guys do exaggerate quite a bit when it comes to certain things, so you, you give them benefit of doubt exactly. in that regard. And, you know, I kind of pulled him to one side and said, like, I need the truth. He was like, no, God's on his truth. Like, I swear on everything. It was longer than three seconds what she's claiming it to be. It, it wasn't him forcing himself no. on her. It was no. a... Mutual. mutual thing that okay. they both done. She didn't pull away apparently. Um, so that really rolled my my bucket up, and that's <laughs> where the, the the problem started. From that point when I found out, I didn't want to. I still made yet. I could have ended it there and then, but I you know, I've always been brought up, and it's, I know it sounds stupid. Some people have gone, nah, I'd have ended it straight away. But when you're in love with somebody, it's a completely different scenario. And you kind of try and give them the benefit of the doubt on the no, second chance. Yeah, the, the chemical reactions in your brain, everything tells you to do something give them another like chance, yeah. carry on. And she kind of went, look, if you want to end it, I totally understand, I'm, you know, I messed up. Yeah. 
I'm a complete idiot, I'm like, see you next Tuesday. She said this about herself. And I was like, look, we're talking person, I think it's better to talk in person over the phone, you know, it's more yeah. corporate. So I went down to her place uh, the next night, or the, whenever we next had a rest day, I can't remember. This is still, this is going into January 2021 now, um, yeah. early stages. This is where you would message me, I was aware of this at yeah, this point, roughly. Remember, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we met up, we spoke about, we agreed, you know, we would try and stick it with it. And like, I know some people are going to say, you're an idiot for that. I totally get that because I am. I should have seen that at the time. But but in hindsight, yes. But you thought a guy forced himself on her, kissed her, and she was apologising to you. Yeah. So I kind of took it as a pinch of salt and gone, right, I accept your apology. Let's try and make it work. We did. Obviously, we made up various things. Um, and then it went on to, it just never was right after that. We didn't want to see each other a lot. We didn't spend as much time with each other. I was just going to her house. She never come to mine after that. And mind you, in the eight months we were together, yeah, uh, she come to my house like four times. I was going there every rest day. I drove down there, um, and the, I'm talking about like East Sussex, here, so you know, it's quite a, quite a four, drive, five yeah. hour drive each time. And sometimes I didn't even stay the night because you'd have to come back to work. Work. So it was kind of like I was making the effort. Um, things didn't work out. I started telling people this in you know the, the people I work with. She wasn't happy. She was like, oh, I wanted to keep it between us. This is it. And I was like, what, you just, because I've released certain information, because you cheated or so You're just sharing your life. Exactly. Um, I didn't say anything private. I was just, you know, saying that, you know, she's done this, she kissed this person, or whatever. I don't know who to believe. I was kind of asking for advice. Yeah. People ask, though, like, well, what happened between you? Like, when you break up with somebody, people pry so much straight away. So, like, you're bound to say something, like, well, you know, Dave, this happened, or maybe it was this. What do you like? No one's gonna just go. I'm not telling you anything because then they assume the worst right, out of exactly. them situation. So it's a bit of a difficult situation there. Either way, you'd have been in the wrong. If you're not yeah. saying anything or saying something. She didn't like this. She started getting really agitated. And she's like, right, we're constantly arguing now since obviously the, the situation. So in the four last four weeks, being we was constantly arguing. Um, so I was, she was like, right, come down, and see me. We need to discuss what's going to happen. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And this was prior. She was on a rest day. I had to go work on a on a late shift. So from five o'clock till about midnight or something. I was working that night. So I was like, fine. I'll come down and see you then. I'm going to work. Yeah. Pretty fair. Went down and seen her. Um, she gave me mixed feelings. We chilled out. You know, we cuddled. You know, kissed. We watched the movie. I actually remember what the movie was, it was Surf's Up. <laughs> For some reason, I still remember that movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> watched that, we chilled, and then all of a sudden, there's like a click, a click to the head. Now, whether she had made her mind up in the instant before I even come down, and that night we was talking, the night before I come down, or it was there and then she made her mind up, she ended it with me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool, I respect that, understand that, I respect your personal boundaries, Gave her a hug. I told her mum downstairs the situation because she was too scared. She was sitting on the step at this point crying because apparently she really upset herself by ending it. Um, I suppose it meant so that I told her that the situation occurred. We've mutually agreed to go our separate ways. Thank you for having me. Much appreciate what you've done for me. And I left. That's what I told her mum. Oh, left yeah. it. Never saw her in person again. This we lived an hour away, yeah. bear in mind. And this is where the stuff begins. Basically, I went I went to work straight after that. Done what I needed to do. It hit me hard a lot, like mentally, like oh, you know, I need a, you know worst time worst time to do it is do it before I go to work. And I'm I'm sure that shift you probably don't remember much about it. No, I, I don't. assume it just kind of blurred past you. Exactly. Yeah. I just done my job and went home. Done that. Got home. She messaged me the next morning. Hope you understand what I've done. Hope we still be friends. Da 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 da. da. I went, yeah, no worries. She went maybe in the future. Once I'm feeling better mentally. This is what she said we can try and work out again. I was like, look, whatever the situation is, we'll see regarding that. I'm happy to stay friends on a mutual ground because, you know, yeah. but we'll see what happens. If it does happen, it does happen, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, you know, we both moved on in that time, we'll go from there. Yeah. So we did that. I'd say about a month later, so four weeks after the end of January when we ended it. Yep, so about February time. Uh, end of February time. I was, you know, 
the night before, I was on, uh, burning all my stuff on the bonfire uh, with my dog. German Shepherd, by the way, just before anyone tries to clarify that. <laughs> um, burning stuff, you know, having a good time. I thought, you know what, I finally, you kind of finally got over it because it takes about four or five weeks sometimes to go. Yeah. Some people take more, some people take shorter. Um, I didn't have any rebounds, nothing like that, because I'm not sort of bloated like that. Went to bed about one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Knock at the door, <laughs> half four in the morning. I thought, Mum's not here, she's out. I'm the only one else in the house. Yeah. This is her dad's. Okay, let's have a look at this. When an open door on the chain, because you never know, do you? Yeah, yeah you want to be safe. Um, I actually had my dog, my German Shepherd, with me at the door because she was barking her head off. I was like, she, it's four thirty in the morning. She ain't like this. Open the door, left on the latch. Six police officers. Hello, how can I help? Are you, Mr. Skinner? No. Nope. <laughs> That's what I initially thought. Sure. I thought, obviously, it's the best policy. Yeah. No, being a police officer. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Mr. Skinner. Can we come in? We need a word with you. What's it about? Oh, we just need to have a word with you about your ex partner. Obviously, who I won't name. I would love to, but I'm respectful in that manner. So, you just put the dog in the house. I knew, right, I have to put the dog in the house because they get all funny about the dog being aggressive and then they make some sort of excuse to kill it. Yeah, because the next thing you know, your dog will be put down yeah. because an officer. Does something so, so I put the dog in the front room, I let them into the outhouse bit that we have, I went, what do you want? Oh, and by my mind you, and I, <laughs> I was in my boxers, <laughs> and I just got up. <laughs> so I had four male police officers and two females just staring at me while I'm in my boxers talking to me. So I was like, come upstairs and get changed. So they were like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So they followed me upstairs in my bedroom and standing there, I was getting changed, I was like, I'm a bit of privacy. Yeah, at that point you probably knew that this weren't just questioning no, when they would as an ex police officer I knew right, they're either here to charge me with something, tell me something tragically's happened to my ex partner, or I'm being arrested. There's no there's there's no, there's no more than yeah, three you, options. You, so you, if they're there to talk to you, they send two officers top. Yeah, yeah, not six. So I put my clothes on, I was like, look, we're arresting you on suspicion of harassment. Yeah. Hang on. Excuse me, this is the first time I've heard of it. Harassment. I said, okay, what have I supposedly done? Oh, we get into details of that. Um, at the station. At the station when you get interviewed. Do we need handcuffs? You know you know what's going on here. Yeah, there's a lot. Do you need handcuffs? Are we going to drag you out or are you going to come out willingly? I was like, right, I'm going to go out willingly because I know I'm innocent. There's nothing more to it. You know, if I wanted a fight, I would have had a fight. Um, but I'm not like that. Well, they said six, so they must have. Something she told them must have made them aggressive. think you were aggressive. <laughs> so I was a bit very confused to that. <laughs> so, you know, I walked to the police station, no handcuffs, got in the back of the police van, got to the police station. Did you let the dog out before this? No. Car? I know this is really random, but did they let. So they didn't let you unlock the dog who's no. now locked in a room? Yeah, no. Could have at least let the dog out. Yeah, I know, but they didn't. And. To me, all I could hear when I was walking out the door was the dog barking. Like, yeah. It was in distress, like something's happened, she can't get to me, what's happening? Well, Please sure. re at least reassure me. They yeah. didn't let me, they literally walked me out. So four of them got in the police car with me, drove to the station. The two females stayed, took my computers, yeah. my PC, they my They took Mac. the Yenox computers as yeah. well at the time. Yeah, my yeah. Mac, my phones, my two phones at the time. Um, my sister's iPad, I was like, wow. So, then no, they we also... never got that computer back, by the way. <laughs> no. That computer was taken, seized, and destroyed by the police force. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we, when I got to the station, obviously, um, I'm going to pretty skip to the, when I got home, my next door neighbour quickly told me, oh, did you know there was a black BMW that turned up, an X5, after you, uh, uh, you was arrested? I was like, no, because she was quite a nosy neighbour, but oh, okay. you, know, you need that in a neighbourhood like this. <laughs> well, we've got one of those, but True. we won't get into They've taken all your rifles, all your guns, everything. I have a licence. What, my air rifles, hang up. Yeah, everything. I was like, wow. So they've taken all my guns and rifles. They've Apparently, anything. Was... That's probably what they thought. That's probably why they sent so many, yeah. because you had armed weapons. Well, yeah, exactly, and they thought, why? Right. And apparently when I was told, and I'll skip back to when I arrived at the police station, but the reason they took my rifles and my shotguns was apparently I threatened to shoot her horse. Oh! Uh -huh. And know. kill her family. Now that's a big accusation to make. That, that's quite an accusation of harassment that you're going to take your guns, 
which you had to get a special license for, special training for, special mental health analysis for. Yeah, you have to have for. a medical <laughs> everything. Oh, but I'm going to kill something. And okay, you were cool. going to drive well over an hour away to shoot a horse for a girl who cheated on you, broke up with you, and you had moved on <laughs> a month later. And with no was... contact between these two. And to me, that, to me, personally, that's obsessive. She's still, at that time, obviously, was still obsessed with, with me. you and what you were yeah. doing. To me, easily. So anyway, I went back, I got back to the police station, I arrived at the police station, police custody sergeant, saw me in, went in the prison cell, right? Shocking, hated it. It does mess with your mental health, there's four walls and a door, there's only yeah. a window, you know what I mean? All you have is a bed with a thin mattress like that, you don't even have a pillow. So I had to take my t-shirt off and lay on the head. All I done was sleep. And I was in that, legally, unless they're going to charge you, they can keep you in the prison cell for 24 hours, yeah. right? Yeah. I was in that prison cell for 17 hours before I was even interviewed. Yeah. So they wait till the next night. They left it o'clock as long as possible. To interview me because apparently where she phoned up Sussex police, it had to be Sussex police that come up to investigate me, even though Kent police arrested me. So they had to transfer the information. Yeah. Bureaucracy so, slow. So the Sussex police arrived to interview me and they interviewed me. I was in the interview room. I was like, okay, call me up. I've waited a long time for this. I was like, yeah, sorry, you know, whatever the situation is, we finally got it. Started asking these questions. We sort of suspect you've been harassing your ex-partner. Okay, what evidence do you have against me? That's what I ask. Because, you know, I've interviewed people before. You, you I know, know what you're allowed to ask. I know what done. the role is, right? And they're like, do you want legal help? I was like, I don't need legal help because I'm not... I'm, I'm guilty. not guilty. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Show me the evidence. Yeah. Well, your uh, Jaguar has been seen outside a house taking pictures. Okay. What's the colour? Gun metal grey. Okay, they've got that right. But of course, of course she's going to she know. She's going to know your car. She's going to know my car. car she's going to know the number plate your car. She knows uh, your schedule because you worked in the flat. Like you say yeah. that. When I asked for the number plate, I said, "What was the number plate?" Oh, we didn't have that information. So they didn't even have a partial plate. So they didn't have the number plate. Just a grey Jaguar drove past her house and parked outside taking pictures and her friend's house. How would they know? Whose Jaguar that is? That could have been anyone. Okay, but if they stopped long enough to know you were taking pictures. Somebody must have flash on them. The camera doesn't... You're not going to know if I pull up with my phone and go like that, stop and take a picture. Even still, like... No? Yeah. What? So you don't have a registration number, you don't have a time or date that I've seen there, it's just made up. And oh, your phone has a tracking chip in yeah. it where they know where you were. Are you threatening to kill a horse as well and, and threaten to hurt a family? No, I didn't. You know, why would I ever do that? I'm an animal person over humans, you know what I mean? I love animals more than humans. That's, that's just facts. Yeah. That's me being honest. They seized your guns because you had threatened her animals. Yeah, so they seized my guns. Obviously, BMW X5 turned up. Yeah. My neighbour told me when I got home. They seized all your weapons because apparently I threatened to shoot a horse and hurt her family. Yeah. Which I think is ridiculous because the stuff you have to go through for a licence. Yeah, yeah. It's medicals a, it's, and stuff like that. You have that. to jump through hoops. It's not yeah. like the US where he can go to Walmart and grab one off the shelf. Semi <laughs> 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 automatic <laughs> rifle was like. We're just talking about, you know, 12 bore shotguns here. Yeah, um, actual hunting equipment, exactly. not. <laughs> but anyway, fast forward back to the to the police station. So you went to the station, this is your bail, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I was on bail, um, we arrived there after the four weeks of being discharged, obviously not being convicted or anything. And all that mental health of not knowing what's not, going not on what's at that going point. On or what's you happening. resigned from the police force. Yeah, I resigned from the police force, um, which was a... Big thing. I sort of signed about a week after that. Yeah. Um, I was. I'm not being part of an organisation that treats you like dirt. Yeah. I'm sure all the time. Um, you know, I've always been a strong police police person that you know like the police snap. But now I've been against them. Obviously, you get good good cops, but yeah. Ain't an organisation I want to be part of, especially when they treat one of their own so badly. Yeah. Um, which affected a lot of mental health stuff. And I've just all I've done was train, go for runs, done a yeah. lot of stuff like that just to keep my mind busy. Um, and obviously, when I went back on bail, the custody sergeant was like, haven't they told you? I was like, no. You haven't been charged with convicted or anything, you're free to go. Yeah, you, so they released you. You didn't know you had all that mental health, all of those problems created by that, the people who judge you, things like that, and they weren't even charging you, they could have told no. you there and then. Exactly, and you think, this was a big time when, you know, which is why a big reason why I had a big gap on YouTube because I didn't upload because I had all this stuff going on Yeah, and I just had to get it right and sort it out before coming back to yeah, well, you YouTube think, content. This is two years later and you were still dealing with that 
the mental impact, the repercussions. And the thing is, I'm still dealing with it now because I haven't got my guns back. Yeah, you've I've requested them multiple times and I haven't got them we back. We still have missing equipment that they took. And we're talking about what? Two and a half years ago now, so. Yeah. It's ridiculous and I think to this but, day I'm very disgusted with how the situation was handled. But hanging over your head, right? Sorry to change subjects. Hanging over your head. Are there still people who believe you did it? Yes. Like you still get judged yes. on that? And Even I, wouldn't say, were, I wouldn't say personal people that are to my no, family. No, you close, but the her side, side of And the police. I know full well that the police side, because I have people that I still talk to that are in the police, not necessarily go on about it all day, but they still believe, oh, he was a little fiendsly. He got yeah. away with it because he was a cop. And I spoke to an ex-police officer, and he kind of said, it's a big deal nowadays, because she's a female, she's a police officer, and you're a male, there's a lot of weirdos about. Yeah. And that's why they take it so seriously. I'm like, I fully understand that. And I'm full support, but not on circumstantial evidence. You do it on yeah. real base evidence that you have in your hand. Oh, okay, his location, his RP on his phone was lo located here. His registration was caught on an AMPR camera on the motorway going to this location. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's over an hour away from anywhere. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did she not accuse you of other stuff in her initial report as well? Like yeah. sexual harassment yeah. and stuff. Sexual harassment as well. That was a At big first, one. That was. If I remember and right. that was actually on document of, it was never discussed or investigated, but yeah. on the document when I got back after I was released, with your breakdown of it said ABC you have been accused of sexual harassment and stalking, stalking and, harassment. and harassment. So I was a bit on the short straw on that because that's a big accusation to make and yeah. I'm not like that. Because you wondered if that was your last time there when you were cuddling that, if yeah. she took that as something different. different. Because obviously, technically, after that, she ended it. So yeah. it, was, it was a big deal, and it was a big part of my life them two years. Yeah. And I had to really take a break from YouTube, as obviously you, you may know on the channel and stuff like that. So it was a big op eye opener, and I've made sure I've taken the right precautions this time. Yeah. And now in a relationship again. Yeah. You, you, but that's always going to be in the back of your mind in any relationship you are in is. And is I told, real. And I told obviously my new girlfriend now. Yeah. What happened? Everything yeah, of I've course. Discussed because you, you I feel, didn't want her feeling, you know, uncomfortable. About or unsafe. Or unsafe. Yeah, Thank unsafe. you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But un unsafe. Women understand. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, exactly that. So I wanted to reassure her that it was all, it wasn't true. This is the type of person I am. Yeah. And please forget about it and don't bring it up as respectful as that and she never has. So yeah, you, you, that's the thing though, you don't want it brought up. No. But it's one of the first things people bring up if they know anything about That's what I'm saying, they never say the good stuff, they always think the bad stuff. Yeah, people only point to the thing. And the thing is, you are completely cleared. But if you went to specific jobs now, they would still see that arrest record and go, like you lose out on that for a false accusation well, with a, no evidence. A job that I was applying for after I come out of the police, I can't remember what it was, but it affected me getting in because I couldn't get in because I, at the time, obviously, I was under investigation still. Yeah. Obviously, now I'm not being charged and convicted. I'm scot free. There's nothing on my record, nothing like that. But at the time, it really affected my yeah. money. To, uh, money to you couldn't get a job. No. Your mental health is down. Your family's name has been dragged. Oh, with and you that's, as well. that's the like, worst thing about like your sister, your mother. Like, I'm mentally strong, but. I had to get through it through training and running. So yeah. that's the only way I can get through it and keep my head strong. But as you rightly said, my name's been tarnished now. Yeah. Wherever you, wherever you go. And there's a whole set of police officers who think you did that. So if something ever happened against you, and they ended up involved in it, they you're automatically prejudiced against, by the police yeah. force. Which is outrageous and disgusting. But I hope that touch with that day will never come. And if it did, they're not the ones investigating because yeah, it's different that's, things that's, that's unfair. But yeah, that's that's basically the the shit I went through the last two years. Well, that was certainly a let's be real conversation then. Yeah, a lot of information going on. If you tune in next week, we we'll have a new guest. We'll have brand new conversations going on. Maybe a new guest depends on the thing. Could be me. Could be you. Could be the camera lady who keeps telling us answers. Get your clip all up. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you guys, uh, you know, this was a real deep conversation. You know, if this has affected you in any way or things in your own life. Please contact me. Yeah, reach out to us. We would love to talk about that with you and to understand well, your you perspective. Help, yeah, because yeah, mental health is a big thing and things like that affect so many people. And generally, 
it's not a bad thing to be mentally unwell. And the it's best not. thing you can do about it is talk about 